Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Tuesday, January 23rd. If you've been hiding under a rock for the last 24 hours, the Jaguars, they did hire their new defensive coordinator for the 2024 season, Ryan Nielsen, coming over from Atlanta to be the Jaguars' defensive coordinator, was the D.C. in Atlanta last year, was co-defensive coordinator with the Saints the year before, assistant head coach the year before that. He has a defensive line background, uh, but we're going to dive into how he potentially impacts the Jaguars' personnel needs on the defensive side of the ball for the 2024 season. You know, you've got free agency coming up in a little less than two months. So uh, I think the Jaguars are a team obviously disappointed in a big way in 2023, really on both sides of the ball, quite frankly. Had a strong start on defense and then completely fell off, you know, everything went off the rails down the stretch for that Jaguars defense. Um, And uh, it's a team that has expectations. You have a quarterback on a rookie contract who can play at an extremely high level. You need to surround him with the pieces that that he needs uh, to potentially compete, you know, in the divisional round, in the conference championship round, potentially in the Super Bowl. That's where you're trying to get in 2024. That's where you thought you could get in 2023. But instead of being proactive, the Jaguars sat on their hands during the offseason and uh, basically said, we're good. So Jaguars cannot do that this year. They have already decided to make changes with the coaching staff. Will they continue by making changes in free agency and then obviously trying to get more impact players in the draft versus uh, depth pieces on day two? We'll see how it all plays out, but... We're going to get into how Ryan Nielsen impacts the Jaguars' defensive needs here today. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Check out ginjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. Right now, our Duval throwback sweatshirts are on sale for $25 uh, today and tomorrow only. Use code Duval with three U's, D-U-U-U-V-A-L, for $25 Duval throwback sweatshirts. Again, that's ginjag.com slash shop. Really appreciate y'all being here. So, the Jaguars. They now absolutely need corners that can play press man. Um, You look at Ryan Nielsen's Atlanta defense. You look at what the Saints have done for a long time. They like to run press man coverage. The Atlanta Falcons led the NFL by a wide margin in press man coverage last year. When you look at, uh, they were running press man coverage on the outside 57% of the time, I believe, 50-something percent. It was 20% more than the team that ran the third most press man coverage on the outside. I mean, they were running it at an extremely high rate. So they need press man corners. I don't think that, uh, obviously, Ryan Nielsen's going to want to adjust his scheme to what his personnel dictates that they can do. But I think throughout this offseason, they're going to try to adjust the personnel to what Ryan Nielsen needs his scheme to do, right? Uh, Because they have some flexibility. They have the ability to do that. I think Tyson Campbell, when you talk about outside corner, can do some press man, but he's always been better in zone coverage, off zone coverage, where he can have his eyes in the backfield on the quarterback. When you talk about press man, I do think he can absolutely win at the line of scrimmage play with some physicality, use his length out there. Uh, He can squeeze uh, down the sideline and really kind of deny a window to throw the football. But against great receivers, he struggles to mirror movements. When guys try to, you know, get off the sideline and and maybe put a double move on him or in breaking routes, different things like that, um, a lot of great receivers, their quarterbacks will just kind of throw the football up there too down the sideline, and usually when that happens, Tyson Campbell struggles to flip his head and get his eyes on the football and make a play on the football. That is just not his skill set. So while he can absolutely win at the line of scrimmage, and Throughout the route, a lot of times with certain routes and press man coverage, you do not really see the ability to play the ball in the air at an extremely high level from Tyson Campbell in that regard. So there's a little bit of a quandary there with how Tyson Campbell can be deployed. Again, I think he can do it. I think he did it at a decent level in 2022 when fully healthy. But uh, you talk about facing all these different receivers you're going to have to face in the NFL week to week, and you're running press man coverage. You really want a guy who struggles to flip his head and get eyes on the football and, and, and make a play down the field playing that much press man. I don't know. I think it's a difficult question to answer, quite frankly. Darius Williams, he does not really have the frame 
that you typically look for from a press man cornerback, right? You're usually looking for guys that look like Tyson Campbell, that have the length of a Tyson Campbell, um, and the athleticism, right? Who can jam receivers up at the line. You know, Tyson Campbell, he can play with length. He can play with strength, bully guys out there. Uh, but again, kind of struggles down the field in, in press man coverage. Darius Williams doesn't really have the frame you're typically looking for, but I did go back to his 2019 season, and again, that was a long time ago, five years ago now at this point. Um, his second season in the NFL with the Los Angeles Rams, they ran a fair amount of press man coverage, and I think he looked pretty good doing it. I think he has the quickness to mirror movements off the line of scrimmage and the explosiveness to go up and contest the football. Um, that was obviously a long time ago, so I don't know how the Jaguars will view Darius Williams as a potential press man corner. The bottom line, though, is both of these players have expiring contracts in 2024. Uh, And the Jaguars, they have a team out for Darius Williams' contract ahead of the 2024 season. Um, He's scheduled to be a $10.5 million cap hit. If they want to move on, they can save $10 million against the cap in 2024. Um, So that's interesting. Uh, just how they're going to view this, right? And the Jaguars, they don't have a starting nickel right now. Trey Herndon is a free agent. Antonio Johnson was a big nickel, uh, primarily in there on rundowns and and to blitz. So I don't think you really view him as a full-time nickel. I think he's more of a safety than a nickel in this league. Gregory Jr. is on the roster, did play some nickel for the team last year. He has the athleticism, I think, to do it, but pretty unproven at this point. So basically... Nielsen entirely changes the prototype for what the Jaguars need and and will be looking at at outside corner, in my opinion. I've seen Darius Williams play press man and do a good job. I know Tyson Campbell can win at the line of scrimmage and press coverage. It's just about what happened down the field for him. I really like both of these players a lot. Uh, I would love for the Jaguars to be able to move forward with them, but you cannot deny the fact that both of these players – Throughout their careers in the NFL, Tyson Campbell, three seasons, Darius Williams, five, um, six seasons. Both of them have played a lot more zone coverage, off zone coverage than man, press man. So I think that it is a greater need than it was, cornerback. You already needed a nickel in my opinion. Now I think you, you depending on how the Jaguars are going to view this thing, and again, it doesn't really matter what I think. What matters is how the Jaguars are going to be looking at these corners and how they fit Ryan Nielsen's scheme. Everything Nielsen does defensively is about being aggressive. Can you be super aggressive playing press man coverage with these two corners? That's the question the Jaguars, I think, are going to have to ask themselves, and that's the question they're going to have to answer and then make decisions based upon that. Now, you could say, well, a good defensive coordinator is going to play to his personnel, adjust his scheme to his personnel. I agree to an extent, but when you have almost exclusively a a press man heavy background, I don't think that's just going to go away. I think you're going to try to adjust your personnel to fit what you're trying to do on the defensive side of the ball. But corner is probably now a bigger need. And, And again, based on how Nielsen and this staff view Campbell and especially Williams, they could be in the market for a new starting cornerback. I think they could absolutely be in the market for a nickel corner as well. So it'll be really interesting to see how all that changes based on Ryan Nielsen being here in Jacksonville now. Uh, interior defensive line was always a big need for the Jaguars, but you currently have three veterans getting paid fairly well. Uh, you can't really save money at all by moving on from Roy Robertson Harris or Devon Hamilton because you did their contracts last year. I think that those two guys can actually benefit greatly from Ryan Nielsen being their defensive coordinator. He has an extensive history as a defensive line coach getting the most out of a lot of guys. Uh, I think Devon Hamilton, fully healthy, could be in a good situation in 2024. But I do think you got to move on from Foley Fatukasi. He's the only one that can bring you some cap relief by moving on. You've got to try to bring in an impact player that can affect the run and the pass up front. You saw the Falcons last year when they hired Ryan Nielsen. They went out and got Calais Campbell. They went out and got David Onyemata. Uh, So I think that the Jaguars are going to need to bring in someone who can impact the game. Uh, on all three downs, who can play consistently on all three downs. Uh, Maybe that is Devon Hamilton when healthy. I don't think Will Roberts and Harris will do that consistently, but there's a ton of talented interior defensive linemen set to hit free agency, and not all these guys will hit free agency, right? Some of them will sign with their teams, but 
as of right now, these guys are scheduled to be free agents. Chris Jones, Christian Wilkins, Justin Matabuike, DJ Reader, Grover Stewart, Sheldon Rankins, Leonard Williams, Calais Campbell, and Fletcher Cox. So there's a lot of guys out there that could potentially come in and help the Jaguars, help Ryan Nielsen get this defensive front going back in the right direction because down the stretch, the interior of the Jaguars' defensive line was awful, and it really impacted the entire defense. Um, I think the Jaguars looking at edge, they've got to bring Josh Allen back. He's scheduled to be a free agent. I feel confident that they will bring him back, whether it is franchise tagging him and then negotiating throughout the spring and summer and getting a new deal done that way or just getting a new deal done sooner rather than later. But beyond that, you know, they have Trayvon Walker. He's going to be a starter for them. They need edge depth. They have no edge depth right now, no proven edge depth. Maybe a Josh Uche or a Bryce Huff who are both scheduled to be free agents, guys that have been in that designated pass rusher role and done it at a high level could make sense for the Jaguars. I don't really think they do anything at off-ball linebacker beyond maybe like special teams level players, back of the roster guys, uh, Foye Aluokan plays at a really high level. Devin Lloyd, I think, ascended in year two. You've got Chad Muma. You've got Ventrell Miller if he can get healthy. So, yeah, I think that the biggest way Ryan Nielsen really impacts the Jaguars' defensive needs for 2024 and beyond is what they're looking for in those cornerbacks. He wants to run a press man heavy defense, uh, as heavy as it gets in that regard. So uh, I think cornerback, both outside and at nickel have become even bigger needs for the Jaguars than they were. You have two expiring contracts for your starters heading into 2024. You have Darius Williams, who the Jaguars have the team out with before the 2024 season. You got to have guys that can run press man coverage. I don't know how the Jaguars will view Tyson Campbell and Darius Williams in that regard. We will find out in the coming weeks and months. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Again, you can check out ginjag.com slash shop. Pick up a new Duval throwback sweatshirt. They're $25 the next couple days with code Duval. That's D-U-U-U-V-A-L. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. Have a good one.